Bonjour, we're at the Eiffel Tower and I thought it'd be interesting to talk a bit about the materials I used to build it. So the Eiffel Tower is obviously made out of metal and I'm quite certain they made it out of iron. Iron is very easy to come by, a lot more so than aluminium. Well, aluminium is more uh, abundant in the earth but it, it requires a bit more uh, time and cost to uh, refine it. So iron was a very popular material of choice, particularly for its strength. So the problem with the Eiffel Tower is that if it's made of iron, it's going to rust. And to prevent it from rusting, you can do a number of things. You can either galvanize it, which is covering it with a layer of zinc. So you may have seen some bits of metal around the house or maybe some construction materials where the surface of the metal looks a little bit like, um, like a shell sort of texture to it. Uh, different speckles. That's uh, a zinc coating, and zinc is a lot, a very, very reactive metal. So, preferentially, the zinc is the one that oxidizes in the air more so than the um, iron ox, uh, the iron underneath it. But they obviously haven't galvanized the Eiffel Tower because it doesn't look anything remotely like the color of zinc. It's actually been painted, and I'm not sure how often they paint it, but they do have to paint it every so often. And this is to create a, uh, a weather, weather boundary between the uh, moisture and the rain uh, on the outside in the air uh, and the metal underneath. And this is to stop it from corroding. But what is rust exactly? And how does, that, how does water actually make metal like iron rust? So let's imagine this is the surface of the, uh, the metal, the iron. So I've got these little FE symbols for the iron atoms. And on the surface of there, let's say we get some moisture. And if, if well, you all know intuitively that if iron gets wet, it tends to make them rust. You might have seen this around, you know, uh, when you're near the ocean and the beach where uh, metal is often a little bit round and, uh, brown and rusty. So we've got a water droplet here. If it comes into contact with the surface of the iron atoms, uh, this has obviously got some H2O in there, some water molecules. Water has a certain amount of ionization, and it's is very very small amounts so this is a forward arrow to show a forward reaction and a reverse arrow to show that it also goes backwards so it can split apart into a hydronium uh, H plus and it can also um, split apart into a OH minus so this can turn into these two components and these two components can recombine to form the water molecule so that's what we've got inside the bubble of water but also around the atmosphere here we've also got oxygen molecules and they can dissolve in the bubble of water, so you've got aqueous uh, oxygen molecules. So, these iron atoms are very electropositive, meaning they really like to give away their electrons. They want to give away their electrons more so than the H plus does, because H hydrogen here has lost its electron. So preferentially, the iron is going to give its electrons away to these hydrogen uh, ions, such that it becomes an ion, and the hydrogen here reacts with the oxygen to form a water molecule. So here's the reaction here, so Fe, it gives away its two electrons, so uh, goes to, it's go to Fe2+, and it's also given away its two electrons. Those electrons go to the, so I need four of them now, so two of this, equa uh, two of this uh, equation here, plus four lots of hydrogen ions, they will react with some oxygen gas, aqueous, and they'll do a forwards reaction and backwards reaction, equilibrium here, to form two water molecules. So when it does this, the hydrogen ions are being consumed by the ion, because the ion goes into the bubble, and the hydrogen, molecule, uh, hydrogen ions are recombining with the oxygen to form wa more water molecules. Guess who's left over? Poor old hydroxide there. Hydroxide it can do some reacting with the iron 2 ions. So, if I go to my next slide here of notes. So after this process has happened, our bubble here looks a little bit like this. So we have our iron 2 floating around. We also have our H plus ions. We still got lots of OH minuses left over because they haven't been reacted. We've got very few of these hydrogen ions left. Obviously, we've got the water molecule in here as well. So notice how in the first step, the ion gave away its electrons to the hydrogen ion. Well, it can do it again in a second step. So we can get this to give away one more electron to the hydrogen ion. We'll get 
Epi. Two plus. Plus four more hydrogens. Plus oxygen gas. Liquid, sorry. Reacts to form. Um, four Fe. Three plus and two water molecules. And I haven't balanced my equation. I need a four out the front here. So the iron two gives away uh, each one of these atoms. They give away one more electron to the hydrogen ions in the solution, and it becomes Fe three plus. So. Now our water bubble looks like this. We've got some Fe2 plus in there. We've got some Fe3 plus in there. Very few hydrogen ions. Lots and lots of these leftover hydrogen, uh, hydroxide ions. So these are oppositely charged and they can do a reaction together. So we can get iron 2 reacting with OH minus. And that will form an insoluble salt here, iron 2 hydroxide. That is a uh, precipitate. You can also get iron 3 plus reacting with three hydroxide ions, and you will get iron 3 hydroxide solid as well. Iron 3 hydroxide, when this thing dries, so the water is evaporated out of it, probably from the sunlight um, and also a bit of heat. When that dries itself, it decomposes a little bit and it turns into iron 2 oxide. And this is the red rusty color we see as rust. So why is rust a uh, problematic uh, process for um, structures like a, you know, um, a bridge or a tower that you have to stand on, say, with certain reliability so nobody dies? Well, the problem with rust is that it doesn't just form an oxide layer on the outside. It tends to weaken its, uh, its, its structure a little bit, such that the iron oxide flakes off. This means it's, it's, it's kind of like uh, the layers of an onion. If you, if you continually remove layers and layers and layers of these iron oxide uh, flakes, then the inside metal uh, will, be, uh, will be eaten away as well. So it continues to wither away and weaken the structure.